Aloha, my name is Enbo Wang, and uh, my, te my team members is Chad Larson and Michael Corrado. Today we will represent uh, analyze the uh, article from the Journal of Accountancy. It's called Boost Profits with Excel, written by James Whistle on December 20, uh, 2003. And uh, this article mainly talk about how to maximize the profit within a company. So um, we use the tools called Solver in the Excel 2010. Uh, within with these tools, we can calculate the most cost efficiency and profitable product mix. So for example, if a company produces three different kinds of product and uh, use this tool, we can calculate um, how many product we need to produce for each can maximize the profit. It will be easily um, to calculate and uh, it will be better for uh, uh, manually calculation. Hi, my name is Michael Corrado and um, I will be uh, explaining the overview of the, the spreadsheet that we, we will be working with. It um, comes from a company, it's called Southern Frozen Foods and this particular company um, specializes in three uh, different um, products, so salsa, soups, and casseroles. And uh, what we'll, we'll be doing uh, to, uh, what we'll be changing actually to maximize the, the profits of the company uh, is the sales volumes uh, for each particular item. And um, if we look down here, we'll look at the, the constraints um, because under Solver we're we're going to be looking at the constraints and uh, the machine time available is uh, 40,000 um, the labor time available is 50,000 so they can't go over those and the uh, market share limitations for each um, it's a company that serves a limited market as a result it cannot expect to sell more than 500 sauces uh, cases of sauces 400 cases of soup and 700 cases of casseroles um, now that I've explained that um, I uh, will be focusing on um, how to download uh, or how to install the Solver application onto Excel. Um, what you have to do is uh, click on File, um, then click on the Options tab. Once the Options tab pops up, um, you'll click on Add-ins. Uh, once it, it loads, um, you'll click under Manage. You'll, uh, it's, it's at the bottom of the, the window, and you'll click on Excel Add-ins, and then you'll press Go. Um, after that, uh, this this box pop, pops up as add-ins available. Um, you'll want to check Solver add-in. As you see, it, uh, I've already checked it, and you'll press OK. And so Solver should be added in now. Um, you'll click on Data, and it'll be over here under the Analysis ribbon. So. Okay, I'm Chad Larson. I'll be showing you how to use Solver. So I'm going to be putting this to use. Okay, if you do like Michael said in the previous part of this video, um, go to Data and then click Solver. And this will bring up our Solver parameters. Now, with this program, we're going to have a little fun. Okay, so to use this, we need to first decide what we're trying to maximize. We have our operating income over here. So we want to just, all we have to do is click that. That's what we want to maximize. We want to have the most operating income possible. So what we'll do next is set this to max. Okay, so now we need to tell Solver what things we want to change in order to maximize our operating income. So if we go down here, where it says by changing variable cells, what we can do is just click that, and then we can click sauces, volume, that's D5, comma, and then do the same for soups, comma, and then once again for casserole. So now we're telling Solver to change all three of these to maximize our profit. Okay, so we're not done yet. Now let's set some constraints because we can't, obviously to maximize would just be to sell infinite of everything. We can't do that. So we're going to make some constraints here. Um, let's start with just two constraints. We scroll down, 
Well, first of all, to do the constraints, we just hit Add. And now if we scroll down, we can see our constraints in here. We want our machine time available that it, to stay at 40,000 or lower, and our labor time has to stay at 50,000 or lower. So right here is our utilization of those hours. So we want to get our total machine time util utilization. We click this for the cell reference. Now you want to make sure this says less than or equal to because we want to keep that time less than or equal to our constraint which is 40,000. So we click in a constraint and then click 40,000 and then click add. Now we're going to do the same for the labor time utilization. So we'll click here on J21 make sure it says less than or equal to and then in constraint we'll click down here J25 to constrain it to 50,000. We don't want it to go any more than 50,000 labor time. So then go ahead and click OK. So right now we're just doing the constraint by time. Now before we solve this we want to make sure to go through here. It says make unconstrained variables non-negative. We want to keep that checked and then make sure your solving method is set for simplex LP. That's to keep it linear. Okay, now all we have to do is click solve. Now you get this box that pops up here. Okay, so we have two options. Keep solver solution or restore to original values. We want to see what our new values are, so we're just going to keep solver solutions and, and click OK. So if you look here, our operating income has changed. If you look at our sauces, solver has chosen to sell only sauces because that will maximize our operating income to $15,000. So and that way we're able to keep our machine time utilization and labor time utilization under the constraint values. Now we're going to go further with this. We're going to go back to solver and we're going to add three more constraints to this. So if we look down in the constraints, it, they are, we only have so much materials for sauces, soups, and casseroles. So what we're going to do next is go back to subject to the constraint, we're going to click add. So we want to say that the sauces volume, we'll put that under the cell reference, is less than or equal to, and we need to go down here, say that it's 500. Oh, make sure not to do what I just did. We want to make sure to click in constraints, and then we can click on the next part. So Sauces are now constrained to 500. We can't do any more than that. Go ahead and click Add. And then we'll do the next one. Soups. Under F5. Less than or equal to. And then we'll do the constraint. 400. Click Add. And then we'll do it one more time. Casseroles. Sales volume. H5. Less than or equal to. And then for the constraint, choose H26, which is 700. And then we go ahead and click OK. Now you can see that everything else we did before is still here. Our set objectives, we want to maximize that objective. We have the values we're changing, and now we have the three new constraints. So we have five constraints total. Make sure this is still checked. It's on simplex LP. And then go ahead and click solve. Now we want to keep that solver solution. And as you can see, our operating income has changed. With these new constraints, the most we can possibly get with our operating income is 9160 under these constraints. Okay, so you can see that with these limits, you can look at the sales volume for sauces, soups, and casseroles. Our sauces have reached the limit of 500. Our soups have also reached their limit of 400. And our casseroles, we've only done 680 casseroles, where the limit was 700. So Solver has chosen to sell less of these casseroles to maximize our profits.